Hey everyone, welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, Year 2, where this year we're reading through and studying the entire New Testament, one chapter at a time. Thanks again for joining us in discovering God's plan and your part in it. Today we are rounding out 2 Timothy with 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, it feels like it's taken us a month to get through this book, I think mostly because it actually has. Uh, it is our goal this week to try to get out an episode every day and get back on track. So if you're still listening to us and hanging with us, thank you so much. I know we're requiring a lot of grace lately, Mm -hmm. uh, but we are really going to try to stick to it. Uh, We're going to, we're going to hopefully put out five episodes this week. Uh, We're going to start off with second Timothy chapter four. Yeah. This, uh, this book is only four chapters long, and like you said, it's literally taken us... Pretty sure it's taken us all month. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so this chapter is definitely ending with some, uh, I guess, like final warnings to yeah. the people. And I heard that that itching ears verse again, um, just people being... Be aware of people who are just literally just looking for what they want to hear, mm-hmm. not what God wants. I think that's very prominent in our own culture today. Also, our newest baby is with us right now, so if you hear her, <laughs> sorry. Um, but I think that's really, really something that's obvious in our own culture today, where we can call ourselves Christ followers just to like slap a name on it, mm-hmm. but then look for pretty much anybody who affirms what we want, we think, we believe mm-hmm. that's outside of what what God's word says. It's interesting because I, I think um, just based on history and what, what we have from manuscripts and, and what we know from Paul's life, uh, it seems like this really is the last letter that we have from Paul. And you can feel it like as you're reading through it. Now, we will read another letter from Paul uh, starting tomorrow, um, but chronologically, it seems like this is the last one. And you can tell that Paul's he's speaking like it is he's at the end of his life. Like he has Mm -hmm. finished. He's been talking to everybody about persevering for a long time. And now he's talking about being done. And it is interesting that one of his closing arguments is be really careful about, um, what people like hear, uh, and be aware that you need to continue to persevere in teaching the truth because there is coming a time when people just want to hear what they want to hear. And it's funny that that was applicable in Paul and Timothy's time and it continues to be true into our time. I think one of the things that is a huge problem for us today, um, the, the fancy word for it is syncretism. It, it's when we like want to be seen and known as following Jesus, but we also welcome all these other things that at times we don't even know don't have anything to do with following Jesus. It's just like traditions we want to pick up and add. Sometimes it's cultural things from other religions we want yeah. to pick up and add. Sometimes it's things from our own culture where we don't want to stand out too much and look too weird and too different. So we just or do what everybody's doing. it sort of looks like it's masked by something else. Like, yes. oh, it's, it, it sounds like Christianity or sounds like it should be, but it actually isn't. It isn't. And one of the ways that we defend ourselves against that, because obviously, like, first and foremost, we ourselves are prone to this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. One of the ways we defend ourselves against it is we uh, become students of the word and we regularly read and study the word. And when we do that uh, consistently, constantly, we're able to notice things that we didn't notice before. Uh, I'm plugged in with a lot of people right now that are... um, students of the word, like they're, they're making a point to read the Bible every day. And one of the things that I love to hear from people when they start on that journey is like, oh, like I'm starting to see who God really is. And, I, and it's starting to reveal in my own life things that I'm doing that are not really honoring to God or, or maybe like are just gray areas. And just re- regularly reading and studying the word helps you clean up those gray areas on your own. Like, like the Holy Spirit is leading you and teaching you and the Holy Spirit is showing you what needs to be adjusted in your own life. Um, that that's why when, when you don't read the Bible for a while and you start doing it again, you start to clean up some of the gray areas in your own life. Um, that is what Paul is encouraging Timothy to do for himself, but also encouraging Timothy to do for others. Like be ready to preach in season and out of season. Um, what is it? I was going to say that too. In yeah. verse two, verse two, it yeah. says be ready in season and out. And I think that's important because I, I do think of, um, just like in, in general, in life, there are parts of life where we are super zealous and ready to go for certain things in life. I think a lot about like careers. Um, so like when you're, you're working, you're like super excited about your job. And then it's like, you look forward to retirement, but like, you don't just become somebody who just does nothing. So (laughs) I don't know. I just think of like, 
your faith being the same way. Like you don't just press on for a time and then just kind of give up later. Um, I like that. I really like the wording of being ready in and out of season uh, because, well, it even just says following that, in order to be able to reprove, rebuke, and exhort um, with complete patience and teaching. So like you have to be prepared not only to know what God's word says, but how to, I guess, like combat what the world is going to throw at you in a like mature way and like a knowledgeable way. But then at the same time, verse three is where it does say like, there's going to come a time where people are going to be very much against what you are supposed to stand for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's so easy for things to get muddled and mixed together that we forget what the truth actually is. Mm -hmm. So you need to be prepared for what it is in and out of season. So I'm just going to read verse three because we're we're talking about it here and hopefully read this chapter for yourself or listen to us read it. Uh, verse three, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. It's like this really interesting progression where uh, Paul is laying out this case where people will accumulate for themselves teachers that will tell them what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. And then they will wander off into myths. I, I like how he uses the word wander. Obviously, this was written in Greek. It's not in English. But um, it, it like it has this unintentional feel. Mm-hmm. Like you surround yourself with people that are just saying the things that you want to hear. And you start to wander. And before you know it, you're somewhere that you didn't intend to be. Right. And you're, you're worshiping someone, really, who's not Jesus. You're being led by something that's not the Holy Spirit. And it's important to stay sharp and stay on track and stay on target. And, and again, I've already said this a bunch of times, but one of the best ways we do that is we remain regular students of God's word. It's not like you read the Bible once and you get it and you're done. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to continually read it day in and day out, make it a point. Uh, to do it so that you're so this doesn't happen to you because it it happens to me just as easily as it happens to Jenny just as easily as it happens to you Mm -hmm. we tend to wander and intentionally uh, making time in our lives every day um, to to be with Jesus and and to learn from Jesus to be led by the Holy Spirit is is critical in our in our lives and in our walk I think it's like you also have to think of like any other thing in your life so being ready in and out of season, I that that example just keeps coming back to me. Like if you think about somebody who is training for something, um, you're not just going to continue to be right. some amazing runner if you just give up right. running. Um, so I think that's just like it's really good practice, and I think that's been affecting us both personally yeah. in our own lives, um, just with adjusting to our new family situation. Mm-hmm. But I can tell over the days where we are not actively reading God's word and getting into like what God is trying to speak to us through reading his word, mm-hmm. that like there are things where I'm not intentionally becoming more irritable or <laughs> um, more frustrated by things so easily, but like it definitely happens because mm-hmm. I am not dedicating this time. I'm not staying sharp. I'm not, um, you know, staying, what's the, what are the words again? I'm not staying sharp in and out of season. Like mm-hmm. this is a definite season for our family. And I don't want to be like out of shape in my faith mm-hmm. because I'm just simply not putting the time in. So I think Paul's making this a really big point because this is like, this is his, I would say his final like teaching point mm-hmm. in this letter because he moves on to like more personal things with like calling out specific individuals and then finally just closing out the letter. So I think this is like the last hurrah. Mm-hmm. And I personally feel that it's very, um, applicable across the ages, mm-hmm. even to our own generation, to my own family, to my own self right now. Uh, if you're into nerdy statistical extra credit, uh, I did some research um, in the past on New Year's resolutions, and I, I promise this connects. Um, <laughs> it's something like 93% of people do not successfully reach their New Year's resolution. Um, but those that share their goal with another person become like 60% more likely to reach the goal mm-hmm. just by telling somebody what yeah. you're doing. And then asking that person to regularly check in on you and hold you accountable makes you like 90, I think it's like 94 to 96% more likely to be successful. Um, so not only knowing what your disciplines are, 
but asking somebody or even just telling somebody what you're trying to do and then asking somebody to hold you accountable on a regular basis like drastically improves that. So if you've been listening to us and and you want to get better at your spiritual disciplines, I think that is very important for all of us. Um, just simple, tangible steps that aren't like super spiritual is like, well, tell someone else what you're trying to do mm -hmm. and then ask that someone else to get breakfast with you every other week or something and check in on you. Um, those simple little adjustments in, in how you spend your time, like, yeah, you might have to wake up a little bit earlier. Or yeah, you might have to take on an extra appointment or something. Um, but it almost guarantees that you will get closer to reaching the goal that you set. Um, because discipline actually ends up being freedom. I saw that on somebody's t-shirt the other day and I was super excited about it. Uh, discipline, Where did you see that? Uh, it was some YouTube thing we were watching actually. I was going to say, I feel like um, I remember that too, but I can't place it. <laughs> but it's like, it, it actually is true. Like discipline feels like, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, but, but the people that regularly hit their goals and regularly move the ball forward, they are radically disciplined because I think they yeah. understand that magic trick it's not really magic trick it's kind of dumb to call it that but it's almost understanding just your sinful nature yeah. like you will never like reach this perfectionist yep. whatever because we are unfortunately just like geared towards prone to wander lord yeah. i feel it yes there you go <laughs> right out of the hymnal there okay. you go uh so then paul actually does just wrap up his personal thoughts like this is evidence that this is an actual personal letter because the second part of chapter four is a lot of his personal notes and there is some gems hidden in there. Um, if you look at, I mean, one, he's just listing some people that have gone on to do other missionary work. He's also listing some people that have deserted him. Um, so there's some some wins and some losses in this second half of the chapter. If you look at verse 11, Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for the ministry. This is significant um, because there was this huge conflict in Acts chapter 15 um, where Paul and Barnabas split their missionary journeys and Paul went on with Silas and Barnabas went on with Mark. And when you're reading Acts 15, it like feels really hurtful. Like these guys couldn't figure out their differences. Yeah. What in the world? Um, but this little note here at the end of Paul's life in second Timothy four shows us that something occurred where there was some kind of resolution. And Paul went from an earlier point of his life saying that he could not even be seen working together with Mark to saying here at the end of his life that he desperately needed Mark. So it, it's pretty cool. That there's resolution there. I have mm -hmm. heard people talk about that conflict and, and how it's like um, evidence that we can't trust Paul. Right. It's really and, and a lot of times they're uninformed on the fact that there's also biblical passages that point to the fact that Paul did reach resolution with Mark. And it, it's evidence that Paul is trying to practice what he preaches. Mm -hmm. um, it actually proves the authenticity of his message rather than working against it. So that's one little nugget in there that mm -hmm. I, I personally really love. It's It's one of my favorite stories to highlight. So I guess, again, we're, we're getting to the end. There's the final greetings at the end of this. Uh, but this is the end of Paul, as we know it. Uh, as Chronologically. Far as this, yes, I was yeah. going to say. Because <laughs> we'll, we'll be getting we'll into be getting, Titus. Yeah, right. right. But um, for this letter and knowing that it's the last that we would have heard of him, like on the timeline of things, uh, I do really resonate with that first part. And I think that's a good year part for today where we need to stay sharp, stay disciplined. Like mm -hmm. you're saying, discipline is actually freedom um, so that we are sharp and ready for every work that God has planned for us in and out of season. And invite accountability. Yeah. Like like having somebody hold you accountable, again, is one of those things that might feel like, oh, that's like really rigid, but actually it's a great way uh, to move forward. And a lot of times when you invite somebody into accountability, um, you can help them as well. So you might have a goal that you want to pursue. They can hold you accountable to that. Uh, they might have a goal that they want to pursue. You can hold them accountable to that. Um, that that works, you know, spiritually speaking. It also just works tangibly speaking. Um, but it's incredibly valuable. I think it's a great your part. Um, just We just encourage you, like, continue to follow Jesus more closely every day. And if you can, turn that into some kind of tangible goal that makes sense and ask somebody to hold you accountable to it. Uh, that is <laughs> that is why I'm telling you today uh, that we're going to try to do five episodes this week and get back on track because it is actually our tangible goal for the week that we're setting to be more disciplined. So we invite you uh, into some kind of spiritual discipline. We uh, hope that it will... Uh, bring you closer to Jesus and make you more effective in whatever ministry it is that you are pursuing uh, wherever you may be. So we'll be back again tomorrow, starting off with Titus chapter one. We'll see you then. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Before we get to the reading, I want to recommend another podcast that I'm a part of called God's Whole Story. 
This year, we're releasing one episode a week on Monday mornings, overviewing one book of the Bible each week. So God's Plan Your Part is a deep dive, chapter by chapter, where God's whole story is taking it one book at a time. If you enjoy this podcast, you'll enjoy that one. Go check it out. Now, here's the reading. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which is the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with the present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for the ministry. Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Greet Prisca and Aquila, and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus remained at Corinth, and I left Trophimus, who was ill, at Miletus. Do your best to come before winter. Eubulus sends greetings to you, as do Pudens and Linus, and Claudia and all the brothers. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of God's Plan, Your Part. Don't forget, you can find us on just about every social media platform and YouTube. Let us know what you thought of today's episode, and if you have any questions, go ahead and post them there. You can also reach out to us directly at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. As always, if you don't have a Bible, or if you'd like to use the one that we use, uh, reach out to us via email, and we'll be happy to send one to you. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you again tomorrow.